guys, so I wanted to show you how you can make your very own naturalist lab. Now you can do this with any space you have. You can use a living room, you can use a kitchen, you can use a classroom. Any space that you have, you can use any color scheme that you have. And uh, there's a few main key things and components that you can use in your naturalist lab to really just make it perfect. So first I want to talk about the skeletons. Now Oriental Training has worked with me on this project so they've provided me with a lot of these skeletons. You can find these on their website, you can find them other places. Um, but the biggest thing for me being a science geek is specimens. Now I don't want real specimens in the house. Not only are they really expensive but they're very easy to break. So I chose um, quite a variety actually of skeletons off of Oriental Training. I have this really fantastic large T-Rex skeleton. Um, I've got a cobra, I've got other dinosaurs, I've got birds, frogs, alligators, cats, spiders, fish, scorpion, iguanas, I mean you name it, I have found them there. And so I've got a huge array of skeletons. Skeletons and bones are kind of the core key sections that I laid out in my area first, and then everything else I decided to build around it. Now, let's take a closer look at some of these skeletons that I picked. Okay, so now that you've seen some of my skeletons, some of the other things that I incorporate are um, parts of bodies or parts of specimens. They don't have to be real. So, as you can see here, I've got this uh, eyeball orb that I found on Oriental Trading. Comes in different sizes. You can see that this is obviously not a real looking eyeball. Um, because it does have a Mod Podge look, but it adds a fantastic quality to our naturalist lab. I have uh, tiny toy spiders here. They don't have to be fancy at all. They don't have to be big or real. They're literally, these are those cheap um, novelty rings that you find in trick-or-treat bags. And I literally just cut off the ring part. So it's just a bunch of spiders. And I have positioned them here throughout um, the lab. I also have a variety of different rats and mice. Um, now I have all black ones because that is typically what comes with Halloween decor. You can have any color you want. I have all shapes and sizes. I have little ones. I have big ones. Um, so specimens like that. Another thing to add into your naturalist lab would be rocks and minerals. So I have um, already in my collection, I have this beautiful geode, and so I've got this down in the bottom of my lab. But I've also got these cool mason jars, which you can fill with all sorts of things. And I've glued on little uh, agate slices up here on the top. And so that's an easy do-it-yourself project that you can do for this naturalist lab. Um, also, because I actually found these, like I said, I'm a science geek, I actually have a small jar of bones that we have found, um, and jaw bones and things that we have found as we've been out in nature hiking. So I actually have these in one of my old spice jars, um, which leads me to my next point, is another really key feature in having an awesome naturalist lab is a variety of specimen jars, sizes, um, I've got all sorts of just tiny little glass jars. This one is just filled with the black sand, just to add some color into the area. There's nothing really fancy about it. You saw my mason jars. Um, I had purchased last year on Oriental Trading, like these little potion jars. They're pretty small. Again, this has yellow sand, so you can add anything you want in these jars based on the color scheme that you want. I did print 
um, from various blogs online, little tiny labels for specimen jars. And I actually just taped them right onto the front of my specimen bottles. Green sand here. And so you have to just get really creative. There's no right or wrong way to do your own specimen lab. Another specimen thing that I have uh, picked up at Oriental Trading that I really like are just petri dishes. Empty petri dishes are fantastic for naturalist labs. You can put small bones in them, you can put actual bugs or specimens, you can scatter some sand in, you can put uh, fake spiders and worms. Whatever it is that you want to display, these, because they're clear all the way around, are another fantastic way to display specimens. Now, um, I do like to add a little bit of greenery in my naturalist lab because when you think naturalist lab, you think things that come from nature. And so a really great way to add a little bit of color into all of these white bones and for me these white shelves is to add in some greenery. So I just have some fake plants so that I don't have to keep up with them. You can see here I had picked this up at a thrift store, it's some fake plants. I actually have a bird cage down here and this is just piled with fake plants as well. Um, and you probably can't see very far but over here I also have uh, little glass beakers and jars and they are filled with fake air plants. So um, a few more extra touches that I've added into our naturalist lab that I thought worked out really well was I picked up a bunch of wooden objects. So when I think a naturalist lab, a field lab, field study, I think wood crates, wood trays, anything kind of nature-y. So I picked up a pack of these, um, these tiny wood crates. These are great for putting jars in, for putting your skeletons on top of, for displaying rock collections. Um, I, also have, I also have a wood tray that I ordered. Um, and I actually didn't color this. I thought about staining it and I ordered some stamps to make it more of a botanical feel with some leaf prints. But I just ended up putting the wood tray there and that actually looks fantastic. Uh, let's see here. Another really cool thing I have that I just, I felt like there was a lot of white shelf space and I really just wanted to add something small into the collection. So I have a stack of these uh, fake vintage looking keys that are just a little craft supply here and I have these keys spread all throughout just random places where I thought it was a little too white I just laid a key on for decoration um, globes I love globes I have globes collected all around my living room so this was a key feature for me and let's see what else do I have oh all right so most of my animal specimens, I ordered skeletons from Oriental Trading, but I also found this really cool vulture. And uh, while I don't have any real taxidermy items in the house, just because I've got kids, they collect dust, um, but for right now, my theme is Naturalist Lab, so I ordered this really awesome vulture because I thought he did a fantastic job um, just displaying a little bit of extra spook for Halloween. So he is over here. I do have a few skeleton items that came from Oriental Trading that um, are noisy. So um, this T-Rex here is actually really pretty loud. Let's see if I can get him on here. camera here for you to see is I also have off to the side I have a little bit more to my collection here you can see my spider down there on the ground I had ordered him from Oriental Trading uh, from a previous year and he's really cool last year I actually hung him up outside um, on a spider web but he's got movable parts uh, here's my other dinosaur skeleton you see here Here's a uh, random glass jar that I picked up that I filled with air plants right inside like that. So a little bit of inspiration for you. I prefer jars that aren't just plain looking like a mason jar. I prefer just different sizes and shapes and textures. Uh, I do have a vintage camera that I've had in the house that I kind of picked up a long time ago. 
And I really, when I think of field studies and nature guides, I think of taking pictures of animals. So I really like this vintage thing. And uh, right here is our science lab buddy. And you can see he's got an awesome lab coat on, also from Oriental Trading. It was under 10 bucks. And that's awesome to add on to your skeleton. And then behind him, so this is another area of naturalist lab you may or may not want to incorporate. But I want, we love uh, cryptozoology and mythology and things that borderline on science and fantastical and make-believe, but maybe has a little bit of truth light in there. So over here we have our dragon displayed. And this dragon is, uh, he's pretty big. He's about the size of my four-year-old. And he um, borders into just a fantastical fantasy world that is based on some underlying truth of science, but not in the way that we know it today. So what I did with him was I painted him with glow-in-the-dark paint. Now you can't see it at all um, when the lights are on. He looks totally normal, but watch this. This is what he looks like when it's in the dark. Mind blown, right? How cool is that dragon? So with the dragon, paint it. Uh, I actually did two coats of glow-in-the-dark paint. And um, you'll need to like charge it with a light to make the glow-in-the-dark show up. So you can either use your phone flashlight, you can use a regular flashlight, or you can put a little strobe light in front of him and then it will constantly glow through the night. So as a quick recap, um, Naturalist Lab, you guys have seen some of what I've done. Uh, things like plants skeletons, jars, uh, specimen containers, even art prints to put on your wall, uh, keys, globes, wooden crates and trays, magnifying glasses, binoculars, uh, field study guides and books. I mean, there's all sorts of things that you can add into your naturalist lab. Just make it look so that it feels right to you. It's all about how you want your lab to look. Um, a few things with uh, the coloring on the back. So I had mentioned for your naturalist lab, you really could work with any color that you have. White, dark colors, bright colors, however you want it to look. So the background you can offset with uh, bulletin board paper or posters. If you don't want to paint an entire wall or section, you can completely fill your wall with art prints. There's a lot of options that you have for designing the wall behind your naturalist lab area. Um, so don't be afraid to try new things and check out other ideas online to really inspire what you want. You know, even if it's just like putting plants up and that's fine too, or a shelf with some plants hanging down. There's so many options. So again, Naturalist Lab Area, check out our blog post that I'm going to leave in the comments below. I have designed some really cool art prints that you can print for free. Don't have to sign up for anything. And uh, you can use those in your house and in your own Naturalist Lab Area. Thanks guys.